Hey guys, what's up? So, welcome to this Houdini tutorial about how to create stretchy IK uh, with chops. So, this tutorial is actually divided into two parts. In the first part, we're going to create a basic stretchy IK, and then in the second part, we're going to add some feature on top of that, like knee lock and knee slide and so on. So, now, first of all, I'm going to show you quickly what's the final result we're going to get. So I'm going to quickly create a bone chain, like this one, let's select the first and last bone, and then I'm going to run a script I wrote for myself, but actually, I'm going to release really soon. So, here, we just create the setup, here we go. So, what we have here, actually, this script, it doesn't use chops to create the setup, but expression. So, actually, you will be able to see both ways, but this tutorial we're going to go to show the chop network way. So you see, we have here we have the, the basic stretch. So the first thing you might notice that when we stretch, our knee or elbow is jiggling around, and that's due to the resolution of the solver. So in my setup, I actually created an attribute to control the resolution, but I'm going to show you where to change this attribute. So you see now the elbow or knee is not popping anymore. So cool. And let's see now the extra feature like for example the knee lock. So the knee lock is going to lock our IK to the pole vector and that's really useful for example when you have a character where you have to lock for example the elbow on the table or so on. So lock. Oops. There we go. So we can see our elbow or knee is locked to the pole vector. Cool. And then the knee slide. So for example, we can slide the knee up and down like that. And that's really useful for the animators because they can use that to cheat. For example, when they, there is a walk and there are knee popping around and that's so useful for them so it's a really cool feature to have in so let's make a new scene and actually let's get started okay so we're going to create a chain but with already IK and twist effector so we don't have to create that manually so here we go oops so that's now our initial setup and let's make a bit more room here to see the network. There we go. We don't really see need to see much the viewport. We are gonna mostly focus <coughs> sorry guys on the chop network. So let's jump right in and let's get started. So I'm not going to explain really deeply the algorithm for the stretch IK because you can find that everywhere on the net for different software. And the concept is always the same. It's basically a ratio between the total length of the chain and the current length between the start and the end of the chain. Okay? So, let's get started. So, first of all, we need to import the, the start and the end of the length of the, the chain in the chop network. We're going to do that with an object, chop. There we go. It's going to be our start object. And then, we need our end object. There we go. So let's press P for the parameters and we need to target our chain root. Here we go. And our chain goal. So this node actually gets in two objects. So the target object and the reference reference object. If we don't provide a reference object, it's going to return us the length between the origin, distance between the origin and target. So actually it were position. Okay? So now we need another um, object to calculate the length between the start and the end. So you can actually do it in two ways by dropping down a vector and plug in the values and calculate the magnitude of the vector, but I I got some weird result by using the vector, so I decided to use another object and plug these two in the object, so in the target and reference object. And now 
just to use the vector to calculate the length. It was giving pretty accurate result. So let's call this start oops, to end vector. And let's drop in, as I said before, the vector node. And let's call it current length. There we go. And let's set the operation to magnitude of A. It's already like that, so cool. Let's make this one a little bit smaller. There we go. So, now we need to know the total length of the chain. In order to do that, we are going to use some constants. Okay? And we're going to set those constants to the value of the ball, current ball length value. Okay? So let's create a constant. And this is going to be up length. Ctrl C, Ctrl V, and then low length. So now we need to go in the scene and get the first bone length. And we can find it under the bone tab, like that. And let's pass the value and let's call it up length. So we, are, we just created a channel called up length with the value of 5.70, blah blah blah. Now let's grab the. Ooh, I actually no, I did the wrong one. The the correct one, sorry. So now we take the low bone, and we need to select the low length, and let's set the value. Perfect. So now we are going to drop in a math node, and this math node we calculate for us the, the total length. So we need to change the operation to combine chops of to add. So now we have we can see the total length 11.33 etc. Okay, so now that we have the current length and the total length, we're gonna need to calculate the ratio. So let's drop in another math node. Let's plug the first, the second. So, we're gonna plug first the current length and then the total length. And we set the operation to divide. Here we go. <coughs> so, now, here we have the, the ratio. And we, can see we have 0 0.7. So, the problem is now that we need to multiply the current ball length for the ratio. But, if we have a lower a ratio lower than one, we're actually gonna get we're gonna shrink our bone and we don't want that. We just want them to stretch. Okay? So we need to clamp or to limit our value somehow. So it doesn't go below one. And there are actually two ways you can do that here in the chop network. You can just use a switch. So basically if the value is lower than one, you provide a value of one. So you switch the value. Instead, what I actually like to do is use a limit node and we're gonna clamp the value. And this also will actually allow us to give a, a max range amount. So we can control the max stretch our bone can have. So let's jump quickly to the chain goal and let's modify the parameter interface and let's add we can do that under, well, let's, let's create a new folder, doesn't really matter. Let's call it stretch. And let's drop in, um, yeah, a float attribute. And let's call it max stretch, max s as name of the attribute and the label, label max stretch. Here we go. So. Let's set a default value of, I don't know, 5, something like that. That might work. Apply, set. Here we go. So here, under the stretch, we have the max stretch value. So we need, now we're going to copy this parameter. And let's keep that in memory. And let's go back to our chop network. Let's dive in. And let's drop in our limit node. Here we go. Let's connect that, open up the parameter, and let's set the operation to clamp. So the minimum has to be 1. 
because we don't want to go below one. Instead, the maximum we are going to pass copy reference. So now the maximum is defined by the attribute we define it outside on the goal. Okay. So now we can see before we have a 0 0.7. Instead here we have one. So we limited the value so we don't get the negative value. Okay. So now, as I said before, we need to multiply this ratio with the current length, so with the up and low land. Okay, so let's drop in two nodes. First of all, let's make some cleaning here and let's calculate that. Stre let's rename that, sorry, stretch ratio and clamped ratio. There we go. So let's drop in two value, two map nodes, one and two, and let's rename those up stretch and low stretch so we need to plug doesn't really matter the order because it's going to be um, <coughs> sorry um, multiplication it just it will just change the out attribute since it will return as the first attribute mod modified if we plug that both to the, the clamper ratio as a first input, we are going to have as an output length and length. So that's easier to remember for us. Okay? So let's plug now the low length. There we go. And we're pretty much done, guys. Let's just create two null as output because this is a nice and clean way. So let's call it up out. And this one is going to be low out. There we go. And we are done. So now the last step we need to copy this value to the ball length. So let's go up. And we're gonna do that with an expression. So we actually need to use the chop function that actually lets let us get the value from a chop network. And now we need to put the path to the chop network. So let's go up one level. And then we are at the team chops network. Oops, let's put a double quotes here. And then we dive in, we have the up out at the attribute was length. Let's see if everything is correct. And I'm pretty sure we messed up something because we get the value but it's actually wrong. Ooh, I know why. We didn't set the the operation, so we need to set to multiply. Here we go. Now it works. Multiply. Perfect. So let's copy this expression to the low. And we just need to change up with low. And it works. So now let's see if everything is correct. So now if we translate, there we go, we have our stretch. And yes, we have our jiggling. So let's get rid of this jiggling. Let's open up the network again. And we need to go inside the kin chops and we will find a kin chain node. So this this node is actually the solver. The inverse key node is the solver. If we scroll down, we have the tracking threshold. So if we add to zero, we have what's it, what I call the high resolution. If we add just one zero, that's what I call the medium resolution. Okay? So let's add to zero and now we see we will see that the jiggling is over. No more jiggling and our chain is stretching. Cool. So that's bring us to the end of the, our first part of the tutorial. So guys, let's see in the second part. Bye bye.